Hey everyone, it's Paul here, and I made this serving tray out of a chunk of Kentucky coffee wood. It's about 15 inches in diameter, about two inches thick. I went for a classic beer serving tray design. I made it for my friend Matt over at Matthew Collins Designs, who provides me with a lot of my wood. And so his logo is burned in the center of it. Uh, bottom of the tray has a very wide, stable base with some decorative striping in it. Uh, and I'm going to walk you through the process of how I made it. I got started over at the bandsaw where I cut out about a 15 and a half inch round. I want to finish up at 15 inches, so half inch I figured should give me enough, and it did. I installed a large six inch face plate, and that's a great way to stabilize a big piece like this. Now, first couple passes, I'm just uh, going to make the thing round. You can notice the angle of the gouge that I'm using is about probably. 30 to 35 degrees so it's not straight up that reduces the amount of uh, potential for a, a catch so this is a really safe way to cut through and just kind of floating the bevel across that surface uh, coming up with a nice clean cut now I'm working on the uh, what will become the bottom of the platter and it was a pretty flat piece but a little bit wobbly still so I just made a couple of shearing cuts you can see I'm, I'm riding the bevel here but using most of the wing uh, on the left side of that gouge just to kind of flatten out the surface to give me a good starting point not producing a really perfect surface here a lot of skips happening um, so just still just kind of waiting for the perfect flat surface so once I got it flat then I started out forming a recess I like to use a recess on a piece like this uh, so I don't lose any height uh, I wanted to keep as much of that height in the serving tray as possible just removing some waste uh, from inside of the tenon All right, now with the tenon, or with the mortise uh, completed, excuse me, starting to define the the base. So, pretty wide base, went about 60% of the overall uh, diameter of the bowl. That'll give me a good stable surface. So when that thing is loaded down with uh, beer cans, it'll stay stable and won't uh, tend to tip. And again, you can get a better view of the peel cut uh, from this angle. Still, it, it may look like a scraping cut, but it really is a bevel cut. You can see that the bevel is engaged. Now, I'm more of a pull cut and a little bit slower, a little bit faster RPM, so I'm getting a slightly better surface than I was before. What I'm doing is trying to just be really careful. I want to get about a quarter inch lift on the side so you can get your fingers under the serving tray. Um, and I don't want to get too aggressive because then I'll lose height on the sidewall if I go more than a quarter inch. And I want to keep those tall sidewalls. Now I'm using a diamond tool. It's my Easy Wood Carbide Tip diamond tool and I'm just using that to form some decorative grooves uh, on the base. Alright now I've flipped the platter around and I'm starting by defining the rim. So I've gotten now, I went for about a three quarters inch thick sidewall could have gone thinner but I just wanted to make sure that this thing was really solid and stable so I defined that rim and now I'm just removing waste uh, from the center and again uh, pushing toward the base 
uh, rather than toward the middle. Uh, you'll find that that goes a lot easier because you're not fighting the end grain as much when you go that direction. Try it sometime. It makes a big difference. And just another pass. Uh, I start by defining the rim again, taking it deeper. And then just using the ridges that were formed in the previous pass and using those to, as an easier way to engage the gouge. Second pass is a lot easier than the first. You just ride that uh, ridge that was formed in the previous and push in. And I'm only able to go down about, oh, I don't know, half to three quarters of an inch per pass. This wood was very dry. Kentucky coffee wood is pretty hard. It's about like white oak. Uh, and very coarse, so uh, generating a lot of heat, so wasn't able to go super deep per pass. Plus, it's only a couple inches thick wood overall, so I wanted to approach with caution uh, the, the, the bottom. And I wanted to leave a pretty thick bottom uh, so it would remain stable and uh, not be as prone to warping. So I probably left a half inch thick bottom. Now I'm using my new Milwaukee angle drill uh, which man I love that thing for sanding uh, then putting it into the uh, Laguna laser engraver and this is sped up a lot that overall elapsed time would have been about 10 minutes uh, then just applying a wipe on poly put a few coats on there for durability and moisture protection and with that I thank you for watching and hope you'll subscribe